Hope everyone's safe. Um, obviously, we went out today and uh, had somewhat of a, a practice of watered down version of practice. And, and I thought the players, for the most part, were excited about going back on the grass and participate in some form of uh, getting ready to play a football game. So that's kind of where we're at right now. We'll open it up to questions. Use the raise hand function. Cameron. Hey, Coach. It's good to see you. Hope you're feeling well and welcome back. Thank I you. Mean, just how have these last few weeks been for you as someone who just loves to be on the grass to not to be able to be with your team, probably stuck in a room for most of the time? Just one, how are you doing? And what have these last couple of weeks been for like for you? Um, I think, uh, you know, when you, you hear of, of athletes and, and just people in general um, having the virus, you know, your thoughts are, you know, how do you handle this? And, and obviously, now that I had, had gotten it, um, it is a, uh, it's something that I don't, I don't wish upon anyone. You know, when you, when you think about your life and um, we, we take just getting up every day for granted, having our health and we have our, you know, our, our schedule already planned out the night before what we're going to do and to have to sit in the room for, uh, for 10, 11 days. Uh, it was pretty tough for me. I, I've, I've never had that in my lifetime to, to stay quarantined for that long of a period. And I think the thing that you think about, you reflect, you have these reflection moments when you're sitting there, laying there, whatever, whatever you're doing, and you just think about all the things that are really important in your life. And uh, it was important for me to make sure that uh, I was safe, uh, I kept my family safe for the most part, but then getting back to the players. Uh, it was quite a day for me when I actually came back and saw the players. You don't realize how much you miss it until it's taken away from you in, in that sense. And so I'm glad I'm back. It's good to be back in the building, be around our staff and the players that are here at this point in time. Oh. Hi, Hiram. Um, just two quick questions. First of all, um, what percentage of the team was able to practice today? And second question, the players that uh, did not have to quarantine, did not test positive, um, how many days of strength and conditioning were they able to do with Joe Connolly dating back to last week? Well, I, I, I won't give out numbers. I'm not going to do that. But, but I'll say this. Um, we had enough to, to have what we call a, a light, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> so I think the players that were there had, had a bunch of energy, were excited, as well as the staff that was there. So uh, I'll leave it at that. And, and Joe's done a remarkable job along with Jerry and, and the rest of our crew. You know, this has been a, a eight month journey when you think about it. This thing happened on March 8th. And I can remember talking to the team at that point. And Dr. Lancaster spoke on what precautions and what things necessary we needed to do to, to, to be safe and protect those around us. And so this has been a long eight months. It's not just the last two weeks. It started in March. And when you can think about it, this building really, for the most part, was never closed. It, you know, now the players weren't here all the time, but there were staff members, there were people dealing with football, trying to figure out the season at that point was going to be postponed, if we were going to have an opportunity to play. And then and that, that, that was brought up that we're going to get a chance to play. We were excited about that. And then this occurred, and, and we were shut down for a little while. But... Um, Everyone that's here that participated today is excited about being here, and uh, we'll be excited when we're at full go again whenever that, that, that happens. Zach? Hey, Coach Zach, you know, with Devil's Digest. I'm glad you're healthy. Uh, you are really us here in these. Uh, it's, been a, it's been a long absence. Uh, I, I wanted to ask about how you make sense of this, because I'd be lying if I said I wasn't also disappointed, as, as I'm sure all of us are. It's, you know, week three of no football. Last year on All Aboard, we hear about Jordan Clark saying he talked to Chase Lucas for a while last night. Tyler Johnson tweeting about getting emotional. How do you make sense of this, especially to the seniors? Because this is, 
I can't imagine what they're going through. Well, imagine if every you know, there's been 86 games canceled up to today in college football, 86. And I, I, I actually told the players that. I said, now, you know, how, how, we, how we handle this, um, this what I call in life, how you navigate all this, the inconvenience of life, how you look at it, where do you go from here? And I said, the great thing is that we actually went on the field today. And that's, that's all we can control. And, you know, this is a day-to-day -day proposition. And I think you know that. You, you knew it when we got into this. I told my wife when we first started this deal, I said, you know what? I'm probably going to catch it. I was well aware of that. I knew exactly what I was walking into. And I did everything possible not to do it. And I went for eight months, a whole eight months, and did everything I could do to make sure that I wasn't going to contract the virus. And for God's sake, I didn't want to give it to anybody. And it happened. And then so how, how you deal with it, I think, is important. Um, you're hoping you get well, and then there's no long-term effects uh, for players, for coaches, for anyone that has this. Anyone in America that has been involved in this, um, I'm hoping that they, they recover. A lot of people don't recover. There's a bad side of it, too. And um, I just think that it's every person handles it a little bit different. But eventually, you, you have to get up. You have to fight. And you have to continue with your life. And there's a pause. And during that time of pause, there's a lot of reflection going on. I can promise you that. Chris. Herm, uh, good to see you. My understanding is that uh, you guys as a staff were planning to play or trying to play at least until uh, early afternoon yesterday. Um, is that accurate? And what can you say about what the specific logistical challenges were to being able to get that accomplished? Just numbers and just all those things were, were, were in, involved in it. And uh, visiting with Ray and, and all the powers to be, we didn't want to hold Utah up any longer, right? They needed to know. And so we just felt it was the best interest for the health and safety of players, coaches, uh, for this whole football team to, to not participate this week. I think the Pac-12 understood that. They wanted us to make decisions as fast as we could. Um, those things are sometimes very difficult. But when we came to inclusion, this was it way we wanted to go um, we decided to go this way and now we're going to prepare to, to play UCLA or have a home game which would be kind of good to see playing at home oh. I'm good to see you um, is your staff close to being intact and also have you had any players decide to uh, just opt out for health or professional reasons or anything uh, no players thus far, um, uh, because of, of health reasons or anything like that, that I, that I'm aware of, uh, you know, as I said, I, I, I can't divulge numbers when it comes to players or staff members. That's kind of been our, our stand on that. So, so I don't want to go down that road, but I, I'll tell you this, we look forward to here in the next couple of days. And next week, where we'll be complete. I'll just put it down. Cameron. Coach, this might be an obvious question, but just people seem to be talking about it. Why is it important for you guys to finish this season and play these last two games? Well, I think it's important for a lot of reasons. We started something, and you have to finish it. You have to finish things in life, regardless of what it looks like and what it, what it feels like. Um, you can't quit. That you, you, you don't get to tap out. That, that's, not, that's never an option. It's never been an option my whole life. You, know, you don't get to do that because then, then things become easy. Then, then it becomes when it's hard, well, I'm going to tap out because it doesn't matter. It matters. It matters. It matters to the, uh, to the program. It matters to developing players to get them some time to play. A lot of these young guys, obviously, will, will get an opportunity here to, to play. 
And that's important for us. So as we move into the spring and we move into the recruiting, you know, this recruiting thing all of a sudden is going to change dramatically. It's going to really change. You're going to recruit, you're going to recruit two type of players now. You're going to reach the, college, the high school athlete and you're going to create and recruit the, the guys that come in the portal, right? That's going to happen. There's a new way of recruiting. It is almost like the NFL. There's a draft and then there's free agency. The portal will open free agency. So now all of a sudden, the numbers you have uh, to give scholarships, you got to ask yourself, you know, I'm, 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 I'm looking at both sides now. Now, does that hurt a lot of high school athletes? Yeah. It's going to hurt a lot of freshman athletes coming out, not a percentage, because there's going to be other players available from different teams that, that elect to opt out when the season's over. And so now the numbers change. How many high school players do you actually recruit? How many do you save to wait to see what's going to happen in the, in the free agency world, I call it, right? So this is going to change. Michelle. Hey, Coach, good to see you. Um, I've got to think that right now these games are about player development, and the question was just touched on that it's not as much about winning a Pac-12 South title as what are we going to do to set ourselves up for the spring and moving forward? Well, you make a great point, um, but, but you still want to build into your program that winning and, and competing is very important, and I think our players understand that, that that's very important. There's nothing like winning a football game. It's just all the work that's put in, all the work that these young people have done uh, for eight months to get themselves into a position uh, to compete and, and have an opportunity to win a game. And that's why it's a shame that our first one didn't turn out the way we'd like. And, and I think we got to grow from that. But going forward, you make a great point. We, we have to make sure that there are some young players that have been in this program now at certain positions for two years um, that need to, 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 to play. I'm not, you know, I'm not, I'm just saying they need to, we need to find a way to get them on the grass so we can evaluate them and see where they're at. And, and that gives them energy. That gives them a little bit of excitement as well. Zach. Yeah. Coach, during the summer, we heard a couple of different ways that players spent their social distancing and isolation. Uh, Kyle Soley told me that his mom bought him a new Xbox. I know that some players spent uh, more time working out in film. What, what were your uh, your 12 days of isolation like? Uh, well, it was tough. Um, you know, my whole family was home. I would hear the knock on the door uh, and they would, they would tell me breakfast is out there and, and they'd leave it at the door and I would like, I'd wait till everybody left and put it in there. And then I'd call them and tell them when I was done and they, I'd put it outside and they'd come take it. But it was a lot of reflection um, was, was, an, was, was answering a lot of calls, by the way, <laughs> from people, you know, it's kind of funny. You had a virus and people are calling you and texting you. And I, I spent half the day just returning texts and calls, you know, and the first thing they ask you, they go, how you doing? I say, how do you think I'm doing? I'm sitting in a room. I, mean, I ain't doing real good right now. Right. And it's, it's, it's kind of amazing, but, uh, the, the warmth and the, um, and the, the people that, that were getting in contact with me was just overwhelming. Um, and you, you forget about how many friends you really have and people you know in your life, right? And I'm talking people that I haven't maybe heard from in 10 years. And they were calling or texting to make sure I was doing okay. And, you know, everybody's got some jokes to tell on text, you know. And, and so you, you deal with that. I spent half the day just doing that every day. Michael. Yeah, Coach, great to see you back. When you when you talk, I mean, I know you just touched on it with obviously wanting to get wins in the spring, but what I mean, what do you feel that I know it's projecting ahead, but what do you feel? I mean, the spring will look like. I mean, it's is it one of those things where I mean, yeah, you want to get more on the field, obviously, but what's the spring going to look like for you guys? Well, we're hoping that this thing is going to you know subside, and there's this vaccine out there. But with that being said, who knows when? When, when players will get it, I mean, it, you know, all the things you hear about how they're going to do it, um, it will probably still be wearing masks. Who knows? I don't know. Um, we anticipate starting spring early, like our first year. 
uh, that I was here and being done by by spring break. That 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 that's one of the models that that obviously when you're sitting at home and you're thinking about the season and and the next season and, and how you start spring ball and all these other stuff. Well, that gave me a lot of time to do that. Right. And so uh, all those things become a factor. You know, when we start, when we finish. And I, I think right now, the way I have it drawn up, we're going to start pretty early. Nick. Right. Herm, good to see you. Um, I know you can't say a whole lot, but a, a lot of teams have missed one game. It's not unusual for teams to miss two games, but for it to be three games for you guys, three weeks down, like what, what went kind of so wrong? Well, it, we, you know, it, it, um, it was one of those deals where we knew at the end when we were getting ready to play Cal and they weren't quite sure. And then all of a sudden that next week, it kind of got us and then it just kept going. And before you knew it, we, we had a problem. And so it's just according to when it happens to you, you know, and when, 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 when things pop up, right. And it's a lot, a lot has to do with time to be quite honest. A lot has to do with time. I mean, we were fine and, you know, then things happen. So that's where we're at. A few more questions. Mark. Hey, Herm, good to see you. Good to see you back. Hey, um, just kind of going back to, um, you know, when, when this all kind of came down and, and, and I guess each day as it kind of piled up here, have, had you ever faced anything like this adversity wise on a football field? Is this the toughest challenge for you? Uh, yeah, because it's been eight months. I, I, I think we, we, we can't lose sight of that. This has been an eight month journey for everyone. So for everyone, just everyone in life, this has been a, in, in according to what your occupation happens to be, you're dealing with. And so, you know, the only really catastrophic thing that happened that I was involved in and I, I still remember like it was yesterday was 9-11. Uh, I was the head coach of the Jets when that took place on a Tuesday. I can remember like it was yesterday. And uh, that was that was that, that was tough. Um, and uh, I think when you realize that um, something like that happened in America it's almost shocking. Right. And, and for us as a football team to go down there, and we did. We went down to the site and we filled up trucks and things of that nation with water and supplies for the first responders as a, as, as a football team. And um, saw a lot of those men and women coming out of those buildings, you know, and, and they were truly the heroes. They, they, they were the heroes. And that was, you know, and then that went on for about a week or so. And then kind of things settled down and. We, we canceled games and all that, and then we got back into the mode of that. Um, this has been different. This has been an eight-month journey, and um, it's been tough on everyone. Cool. Hey, Coach. Leadership is a huge yeah. asset in football, obviously. You as the face of the program and players we've seen uh, step up into leadership roles this offseason, like Frank and, and Chase and Kyle. Uh, with that being said, how difficult is it to lead during such a time of uncertainty, especially when games can be canceled at a moment's notice? Well, this is the most important thing, is how do you lead when there's controversy and, and all these things happen, right? And I think the thing about good leaders, what I've always learned is there's a consistency of how you lead. You don't, you don't panic. Um, I think you folks have watched me long enough now uh, on how I handle myself and on the sidelines doing the football game. There's a lot of different things that happen. But I think the players understood that coach won't panic. He'll have a plan. It, we'll have to adjust because he always talks about adjusting. And then we're going to move forward. And we're not going to dwell on what has happened. We're going to move forward on what we can do. And right now we can participate as, as, as a team in practice, preparing ourselves to play a football game. And that's that's going to be our mindset along with staying safe and keeping others around us safe. That's, that's kind of been, been the deal. And it's, it starts with me. And one thing they know about their head coach is that he's always going to tell them the truth and he's always going to be consistent. 
He's always going to give them hope. He's always going to give them hope. They know that. They, they know it. They feel it. And they see it. Last question, Doug. When all this came down during the cow week, uh, had someone told you that it was going to cost you guys three games? Would, would that have surprised you? Or did you know that this was going to be a, a long-term thing? No, you didn't know. You didn't know what was going to happen. You know, you knew Cal was, was, was right there on the edge. And they were, they were up to the last day, too. They were up to Friday not knowing if they were going to be able to go. And so things happen for them when they get cleared, and then they, and they, they, they went, right? Um, but no, we never anticipated anything like this. I mean, we, you don't, just don't. And like I said, we, we're good for eight months. This has been eight months. I think sometimes we lose sight of that. This thing's been going on for eight months. And, 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 and we, we, we've been juggling this ball and, you know, for the most part, we did, we did a really good job. And, and, had, and, and, and for some reason, um, we sit where we sit right now. All right, thank you, Coach, for the time. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Stay coach. safe. Thank you. Stay safe. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Thanks, Coach. 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 Thanks,